Hello everyone, here I am in lockdown, as I'm assuming all of you are as well. And as I'm, because I'm in lockdown, I've been getting in lots of texts. People have been sending me emails and I'm getting uh, telephone calls from people who are uh, sending me responses to this lockdown and to this pandemic. And one of them that came today that I found uh, particularly interesting, uh, this one here, uh, which is from the Wawankara. It's an Indonesian, actually, it's an Indonesian uh, news site, I guess. And if you can see on the title there, just read the title up here. To get rid of the plague, open the window at the Dome of the Prophet's grave and pray there. That's the title. And it's a quote from an interview of Dr. Irfan al Alawi. Who is Dr. Irfan Al Alawi? Well, let me just show you. I mean, it's fascinating. He has about one, two, three, four, five, uh, at least five different portfolios that he is responsible for. He is, first of all, an expert in tasawwuf, uh, that is Sufism, Islamic mysticism. Uh, he is the executive director of Islamic Heritage Research Foundation, which is based in, in Britain. He is the international director for the Center for Islam's Pluralism, uh, which I believe is here, believe based in the United States. He's a visiting fellow of the Wilson International Center for Scholars and also a visiting fellow for the London University there in London. So he lives in London, well known. Uh, the person that actually, my friend that sent it to me, knows him personally and actually has used him uh, on her uh, in in her uh, her location there in Britain uh, to bring in an expert from Islam. So she was quite troubled by what she was hearing and wanted to know my take on it. And as I read through this interview, let me just show you some excerpts from this interview by Faisal Asagaf, which was just done on Sunday. Now we're Tuesday, so we're just two days ago. Uh, this was done on the 29th, we're the 31st of March, 2020. Uh, and he asked this, this is the first question he asked. Do you have any suggestion on how to combat this coronavirus pandemic from an Islamic standpoint? And uh, Dr. Alalawi says this. Yes, th there is, and it is the beliefs of Al-Sunnah, Wajama, and most of the Muslims that we should turn to our beloved Prophet as he is our means and connection to Allah. There is a window on top of the green dome, Kuba al kadra which is covered, and this window is directly on top of the grave of the Prophet in the house of Sayyidah Aisha. Uh, here's a picture. I'm going to put up a picture. There's the green dome, and see the little window there? Can you see the window at the top? That's the window he's referring to, and that's the window that uh, ev evidently uh, is, well, it's actually, it's, it's quite historical. He goes on, and, said, and the question, the next question is, so what should be done with that window at the dome of the Prophet Muhammad's grave? That's the question asked by Faisal. Dr. Alawi responds, there is a hadith that when the people of Medina suffered a sphere draught, they came to Sayyidah Aisha, the wife of Muhammad, and told her about the situation and the suffering of the people and the animals. He said, go to the Prophet's grave and open the window towards the sky so that there will be no roof between him and the sky. And then he refers and he says, well, what do you think about the Saudi Arabian authorities? What will they do with it was the question. And he says, that this is, refers to Al-Dariba in the Darimi in the chapter 15 of the Muqaddimah introduction to his Sunan 1, uh, colon 43, entitled Allah's generosity to his prophet after his passing away. And when asked, well, who should do this? His response was, the people who should do this should be the eunuchs from Abyssinia. By the time I got to that, I, I was saying, oh dear, <laughs> this guy, he, this must be a joke. Uh, and then I looked at the very top and I saw April 1. It had already turned April 1, I guess, there in Saudi Arabia when this was published. But then I realized, hold on a minute, uh, they don't do April Fool's jokes. So this could not be an April Fool's joke. This is actually quite serious. He is serious about this. So as I went on into the interview, I noticed he then goes in and probably, and this is what's, and, and, and as I read it, I thought maybe this guy had gone mad. And in fact, the, per, the, the lady who sent this to me thought that he'd gone mad too. And she's a friend of his, and she was wondering if this guy had gone off the top and had gone bonkers. But he's actually referring to Surah 4, Ayah 64. 
in Surah 4, let me just read it to you. Surah 4, Ayah 64 here. I've got it right here. It says this. We sent no messenger but to be obeyed by Allah's leave. If they, when they had been unjust to themselves, had come to you and begged Allah's forgiveness, and the messenger had begged forgiveness for them, indeed, they would have found Allah all forgiving, most merciful. So what Allah is doing here, Dr. Irfan Alalawi is saying, it's in chapter 4, verse 64. It's in the Quran that you're supposed to ask for forgiveness, and this is the way to do it. And I thought, well, good, this guy, that's one solution. And then he goes on and says that this has been done before. When asked in any previous time, he said during the Ottoman period, the early Ottoman period, they also opened up the window and they were able to stave off a, a, another a, a difficulty. And he didn't say what it was. It was just an awful lot of suffering. So he said there has been precedence for this. And as I started thinking a little bit longer, I started thinking, wait, this is not really an April Fool's joke. This guy is really serious and... He certainly has an awful lot of st high standing. He belongs to an awful lot of very prestigious organizations. There must be something else up his sleeve. And as I start thinking a little bit longer, I realize that this guy actually is onto something here. Because he says this in one of his responses. He said, this is an excellent dahwah for non-Muslims, that Islam is the religion chosen by Allah without associating to shirk and bida. Now, shirk and bida, it's a little odd because... The idea of shirk and bidah, what you would almost think by opening up the window, that that would be the shirk, that would be the bidah, that would be the, the thing, that the, the sin that would be transpiring. But he's actually onto something here, and there's there's something more clever than it's going on. Talk, take a look and see who he is. Remember that this is the man who got really upset a number of years ago. In fact, it was like it was 2015. Uh, and he was on television, and here I'll just show you some pictures from those television shows where he was very incensed as to what was happening in Mecca. Because of the fact that he is the director of Islamic Heritage Research Foundation, he's very much interested in retaining these uh, heritage, uh, these old areas of heritage, Islamic heritage, like the mosque uh, in uh, the Kaaba, sorry, in Mecca. And so he was quite upset that the Saudi Arabian authorities were destroying, and we've talked about this, I've mentioned this referring to Gibson's material when he looked and he saw that an awful lot of the Mecca itself was being reconstructed. Here are some pictures, just take a look at these pictures, you can see where there are cranes after crane uh, that are now uh, digging out what are historical places like Khadija's house and also uh, where the prophet lived when he was a young man. Uh, here is an Ottoman fort. This is a very well-known Ottoman fort that stood where the the clock tower now stands. This this clock tower that you see here is the fourth highest building in the world, and it's the largest clock I think in the world. It's forty-five meters across, forty-five feet across. Excuse me, and uh, it's towers above everything else. But where it used to stand was this Ottoman fort, beautiful Ottoman fort, and. Back in 2014 and 2015, Dr. Irfan al Alawi was incensed by this. He went on to television, spoke about it, decried the fact that they were destroying all these great places. He didn't call them holy, but in some ways they are. And the fact that he is also executive of the Center for Islamic Pluralism su suggests also to me, and that he's also uh, expert in tasawwuf, suggests to me that he very much wants these because... The pluralism he's talking about is Sufism along with Shiism and along with Sunnism. He wants all three to be honored and to be respected. And he wants their holy places to be honored and respected. And he's been very vocal about this, quite open about this. So in some respect, he is actually quite serious. But secondly, there's also an agenda going on here. Now, here's what I think. This is what I'm going to add to it. Now, I may be wrong, and you can probably correct me if I'm so. But I think the reason he's doing it right now, well, this was the 29th when he did it. If you take a look at the coronaviruses and you look and see where it's going and take a look at China, now here in the United States and Europe, the numbers are still increasing exponentially every day. There's tens and tens, there are hundreds uh, of tens. There are, in fact, uh, hundreds of tens. We're off, what, uh, approaching soon 200,000 here in the United States. But in China, where it first started, take a look and see the numbers there. The, they are now moving. They have They have now pretty much equalized, and they're now starting to go back down. And they're starting to go back down. And if China is the future for the rest of us, 
we also will follow the same route. And you can see that already happening. Uh, I just uh, saw today that they may even have a cure. It looks like maybe this coloquin, uh, um, this malaria medicine, um, hydrochloroquine or chlor chlor chloroquine, I think that's it's called. Uh, that has been very effective in places like France and also in China. It could be if that does prove to be effective that that might, chloroquine, that's what it is. If that is effective, that would be, and they have an enormous amount of, of reserves of it because it's used all over Africa. It's one of the most effective ways to eradicate malaria. If that is so, then they can certainly use that uh, to shut this pandemic down. He knows that. I'm sure he's reading it. I've read it. You've all read it. You've all seen this. Uh, we're already seeing that there will be a drop-off in time. And some are saying uh, that may be in May. Some are saying maybe in June. There may be another secondary pandemic. But by that time, they'll have enough of the ventilators. They'll have enough of the equipment. All the different companies that are making these ventilators, General Motors and Ford and Tesla and the others. Uh, this guy that makes pillows is making these glass shields. I mean, everybody, it's like a wartime footing. So it, this it will uh, break off and start to decrease, level off and start to decrease. And he knows that. Knowing that, if they were to open the windows now, this is me, this is Jay Smith's take on it. If he were to start to open that little window now and publicize it all over the world, when the decrease happens, he then can turn around and say, see, it is because we went to that window and we prayed to Muhammad and he was an arbiter, which means the window was needed for him to be able to talk to God <laughs> like a window would be able to do that. I mean, that's odd to me. I mean, there's a whole, there's a whole problem with theological understanding here. But nonetheless, let's run with this. So he, what he is saying is by opening the window, there is now a, t a conduit between Allah and Muhammad, which, was, which has not been there when that window is closed. Nonetheless, let's take him at his word. If that is the case, then... You can see I've been doing this tongue-in-cheek. If that is the case, then he can then claim credit for having solved the pandemic. And it had nothing to do with the scientific word. It had nothing to do with the ventilators. It had nothing to do with the chloroquine. It had nothing to do with anything that we're doing in the West or around the world to solve this problem and eradicate this pandemic. It can be credited to Allah and credited to Muhammad. And he can take the credit for it. And he can look back at it. And he says, it's because of me in that little window that now the pandemic has been eradicated Thanks be to Allah. <laughs> Can you see why? In some ways, you almost have to laugh at it, because though he is serious, though he is quoting chapter 4, verse 64, though he is going to the traditions, and he's looking at precedent there in history, I think he has another agenda. See if I'm not wrong, and see what happens when this pandemic does get eradicated, and finally we get back to normal. See if he doesn't go public and say it's because of that little window. I may be completely wrong. But I don't think that this guy is so foolish. I don't think that this is an April Fool's joke. I think he really is quite serious. And I think he does believe that he can take credit for it. As he did say, this would be great dawah for the non-Muslims that Islam is the religion of chosen by Allah without association to shirk and bid'a. Without, in other words, what he is referring to is shirk would be us who go to Jesus Christ. Well, another one of those odd stories that comes down the pike that may have a little bit more resonance to it, and we'll see if in the future he doesn't use it to his advantage. <laughs> Anyways, this is Jay in isolation, talking about the coronavirus. Hope you're doing well. Stay safe, stay indoors, and stay healthy. This is Jay, over and out.